I wanted to begin with a few questions I was recently asked on a history quiz. First question. Name the three branches of government and their distinct functions. Question two. Define the rule of law. Question three. Who wrote the Federalist Papers? And the bonus question. Name as many Kardashians as possible. Don't worry if you thought every question except the last one was difficult. You're not alone. If you could answer all of them, consider yourself lucky to not be in the majority. These questions, except the bonus, are examples of those asked on a U.S. citizenship test that all immigrants are expected to take in order to become Americans. A study at Xavier University found that one in three native-born Americans fail the civics portion of this naturalization test. 97% of immigrants applying for citizenship pass. As for the last question about the Kardashians, a self-controlled study conducted by civil rights attorney Lisa Bloom found that every participant she surveyed, most of which were college students, could name at least one Kardashian, and many could name all the three sisters, Kim, Chloe, and Courtney. There is without a doubt a disparity in what Americans believe is the most important information to remember. Lisa Bloom said it best when she wrote, Our best and brightest are able to correctly name more Kardashians than wars were in. They could detail for me the problems in celebrities' personal lives, but not those in their communities or country. They know more about reality shows than reality. My name is Leah Ward. I'm currently a junior at Seaholm High School, and I'm here today to talk about why historical indifference in America will set us up for failure in the future, and also about an idea I had when I was 10 to create a better future. Unlike most 10-year-olds, I did know the answers to all of these questions I asked at the beginning, because I was fascinated with history as a child. I spent most of my free time researching the Revolutionary War in the library, and even named my baby doll after James Madison, the father of the Constitution. My affinity for history was primarily fueled by my dad, a history major in college and a circuit court judge in Oakland County. He always reminded me of how special our country's heritage is in creating who we are as a people. One day at lunch, my dad and I were discussing our frustration over a newspaper ad that was for Memorial Day sales that would be occurring in the next few days. Now, we weren't upset that mattresses were only 30% off instead of 50%. We were upset about the entire idea of having sales on a national holiday, when people should be more, fo more focused on remembering those who fought and paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. We were upset that Americans valued sales and days off of school more than the principles that that holiday was celebrating. Then, by some stroke of craziness or genius, we came up with an idea. We wanted to create our own civic holiday. Looking back on this day at lunch, I realized how idealistic our idea was. But I am still in awe of the dedication to our small idea and how it turned into the organization and the holiday that we have today. As I'm sure many of you know, there's a big idea between having an idea and making it a reality. Over those next coming months, my dad and I worked tirelessly to create a framework, introduced it to everyone we met, including family members, lawyers, friends, judges, teachers, administrators, and even government officials. Today, Patriot Week is celebrated in over 10 states across the country, and has state proclamations and re resolutions in five of those states. Patriot Week has been brought to classrooms, community groups, festivals, parades, senior centers, museums, colleges, libraries, and even a public access television show. Our idea got off the ground because my dad and I found that we weren't the only ones who believed in our message of reinvigorating the American spirit and dedicating ourselves to appreciating and comprehending American history and civics. The vast majority of Americans believe in this idea too. When it comes to our civic knowledge and understanding our nation's history, ignorance definitely is not bliss. Everyone from the President of the United States and the members of Congress 
to those of us who are unemployed, choose not to vote, or don't have the ability to vote yet, need to understand more about the country we live in. George Santayana once famously wrote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. There are two main reasons why, as a nation, we need to make a better effort to remember our nation's history. The first is repeating mistakes. If we cannot understand our past, especially our past mistakes, there's little doubt that we will create a catastrophic future by repeating those same mistakes over and over again. For example, if you look at a timeline of the recessions in the United States, it's very evident that many of the key economic depressions that we had were caused by the same things as the ones that occurred only a few decades beforehand. It's easy to put a band-aid on a problem and hope for it to heal on its own, but if you forget why you needed the band-aid in the first place, it's likely you're going to get cut again. The second reason to remember the past is because history is so important to our understanding as human beings and as Americans. Remembering our history helps us understand why our nation is here in the first place and reminds us not to take our freedoms for granted. In the 240 years since we declared independence, millions of people have fought and died to protect our freedom of speech, assembly, religion, press, and petition. Although we are so blessed to have these freedoms, many Americans take them for granted. We cannot be ignorant of the privileges we enjoy as Americans when so many people around the world don't have the right to have their opinions heard, fear for their lives because of who they choose to worship, and live under an oppressive government. In the end, our responsibility to keep our nation's history and civics alive is not something that can be forced on us by our history teachers. Civic knowledge is not something that should be purged from the mind after taking a test. Through Patriot Week, we remind Americans that we must always keep in mind the founding first principles our country was founded upon in the Declaration of Independence, the great patriots that made those principles come alive, the key documents and speeches that highlight our past, and the flags that serve as symbols for freedom. But we cannot only remember the good in our past. Our mistakes cannot be forgotten. We must also remember the Japanese internment camps, the Trail of Tears, slavery, and the time before the Civil Rights Act of 1964, if we hope to not repeat these horrible mistakes in the future. We must remember the good, the bad, and the ugly. Confucius once wrote, Study the past if you would define the future. As Americans, we have a responsibility to our founders, our people, and our children to not let the events of history remain lost in the endless pages of musty textbooks. As I'm sure we've all heard before, America's future is truly ours to decide. Our generation has been left with the immense task of fixing the problems that were left for us by our parents and the generations before them. To solve these problems, we must drive forward, be innovative, creative, and impactful. But we need to make sure to look in the rearview mirror. Thank you.